welcome to Grace Bible Church ProSide Online. With Jesus Christ, we are able to overcome challenges we face. God wants us to remember those victories. Pastor Paris Hayashi shares how God desires our lives to have forward momentum in an intimate relationship with Him and with others. When the whole nation had crossed, finished crossing the Jordan, the Lord said to Joshua, choose 12 men from among the people, one from each tribe, and tell them to take up 12 stones from the middle of the Jordan, from right where the priests are standing, and carry them over with you and put them down at the place where you stayed tonight. So Joshua called together the 12 men he had appointed from the Israelites, one from each tribe, and said to them, go over before the ark of the Lord your God into the middle of the Jordan. Each of you is to take up a stone on his shoulder according to the number of the tribes of the Israelites to serve as a sign among you. In the future, when your children ask you, what do these stones mean? Tell them that the flow of the Jordan was cut, cut off before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. When it crossed the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off. These stones are to be a memorial to the people of Israel forever. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your presence already established here in this place in worship, in glorifying you, in exalting you, of pouring our hearts to you. And, and as Kali said, your heart of love is being poured out to us. We thank you, Lord, as we uncover and go through your word that your Holy Spirit would speak to each and every heart here this morning. Encourage us, empower us, Lord, to fulfill the destiny that you have as individuals and as a spiritual Hana. We thank you in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. remembering, never forgetting, Remembering gives us, gives us a clear perspective how awesome God is. God is awesome. God is enthroned in the praises of his people as we spend some time in worship. God is always at work. He's at, he, he was at work for the very first time you encountered him. Maybe he was at work even when you didn't know he was at work. He was already at work in your life. And he's working in your life now and he will continue to work in our lives in the future. But we must remember, sometimes in life, it's so easy to, as storms come, as situations arise, as we go through some difficult moments in life, and all of us go through difficult moments. No one is immune to some, some valleys in our lives. We all go through them. Everyone does. In your family, in, in your job, in, in your career, in your health, everyone has issues. But the Lord was saying, Joshua, make sure that when you set up these stones, it's there so that the people of Israel will not forget and their children will not forget and their children's children will not forget. But here in this life, currently, sometimes when we walk through a storm, we tend to look at the storm and magnify the issues that we are in and the circumstances that we are in and we forget the goodness of God when he was working in our life. And sometimes we forget that. But God was saying, Joshua, make sure you set up these stones so the people of God won't forget. But we, we see the Old Testament. We know the people of God forgot, turned their backs on God. God had to correct and adjust them, and they turned their hearts back to God, and then they turned their hearts away from God, and God had to correct and adjust and turn their hearts back to God, and they turned their hearts away from God. So there's Israelites faced the values, and Israelites faced circumstances in their life. But it was the stones were there to remind them, don't forget about me. Don't forget about my goodness, my faithfulness, my provision, my protection over your life, over your family. And I know many of us in our circumstances, sometimes we can forget. Psalms writes this, the writer of the Psalms, for the Lord most high is, is, is the great king over all the earth. Our God is awesome. Now when you hear that word, sometimes we kind of downplay it and trivialize it in our own vocabulary. You know, for myself included, I use that word flippantly sometimes. You know, but the psalm is saying, God is awesome. But in our daily life, we sometimes use that word. You know, hey, you know, last night I went to this great restaurant. The food was? Awesome. awesome. Hey, that movie I watched, man, you gotta watch when the game stands tall. That movie was? Awesome. You know, as Pastor Norman says, Raiders of the Lost Ark was? <laughs> Right, you can't get saved unless you watch that movie, he said. But, you know, what we experience or what we say or, 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 or what, we, what we taste and what we do, sometimes it, we feel like it's awesome. Many years ago, when I was much smaller, 
I had the opportunity to, to jump out of a plane and skydive. Yeah. That was, awesome. no, that was scary. <laughs> That was frightful. The, the, the story is I'm just taking a little bunny trail. I was 220 at that time, and I won't tell you how, what I'm at now. But 220 is the limit that you can in order to skydive. And so Billy Lau, Pastor Billy Lau was with, with me and some of the other guys, and then I was getting ready, and then the instructor who was going to uh, be my tandem uh, instructor uh, tied to me. Uh, they were talking, and this is Pastor Billy Loud told me after this, as I was getting ready, he said, you know, I overheard them telling the guy that's going to go with you. He says, dude, you got the big one with you today. <laughs> I said, great. I said, great, great. And so we, we dove off, the, we dove off, uh, we, we, they kind of launched us off the plane, and it was an interesting experience. I, I encourage you, if you guys want a thrill of your life, go do it. It, it, was, it was scary, okay? Well, I don't, know if, I don't think it was awesome, but it was scary. And then... All right before we were about to land, the guy tells me, you know what, you're too heavy. This guy was big too. I said, we're too heavy. I said, well, you're too heavy. I have to drop you. <laughs> I'm like, I'm, I'm yelling. He's yelling at me, bro, because it's loud. And I'm like, drop me, what? <laughs> Don't worry, you'll be safe. I'm like, oh. And so last 20, 15 feet, he had to loosen the thing. And most times, you see everybody else, they kind of land together real nice, real pretty. Just kind of land both of them two feet. And, you know, and but me, as soon as he hit the core, the last five feet, he just went bam, and I slid on my core like, boop, 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 boop. <laughs> And I think they caught it on film back then. And, he was laughing, everybody was laughing. I had, I had Ocole marks on my, dirt marks on my cola and everything. And I don't know, that was for free. I don't know what I was talking about. Where was I? Kali, help me. But sometimes we, we, we say that word real, real flippantly. We say, this was awesome, that was awesome. My iPhone 6 is awesome. You know, we, we, we say things. But truth be told, the only thing that's truly awesome is God. God. He is truly awesome. I read this in a dictionary because I know you wanted to know what the word awesome was. Thank you for asking. This is straight out of, out of the dictionary. It says, inspiring an overwhelming feeling of reverence, admiration, or fear, causing or inducing awe. Awe. It's causing or inducing awe. When we think about God, do we feel his aweness? In fact, that's a word. Do we feel his presence? And this morning, do we feel his presence in such a real way that it calls in awe and say, Lord, thank you for who you are. That's what worship should do in our lives. Bring us to a place of thankfulness for who he is, what he has done in our lives. Psalms 127 verse 4 says this, he determines the number of the stars and calls them each by name. That's how awesome God is. He knows all the stars in the sky even the shooting stars, and he has a name for each and every one of them. How much more do you think that God knows who you are? How God is interested in your life? How God knows the circumstances that you're walking in and, and tells us, I will be there with you if you do not forsake me. If you draw near to me, I will draw near to you. Trust me, if the creator of the universe knows every star in the sky, he knows you. He knows what you're walking through. He knows what you will walk through in life, and he is there with you. That's how awesome God is. But I think sometimes we do forget in life. Life goes on. The daily grind sometimes takes us off focus on who God is. As we cross over, we're, about, we're hitting almost 20 years in a few weeks. On October 23rd, Grace Bible Pro Side will become 20 years old. That was a great time to clap. <laughs> Can you believe it? Some of you might have been here a few weeks. Some of you might have been from, from the original 30 that was part of this church plant and launched out of Grace Bible Church, Honolulu. But 20 years of God's faithfulness. And I remember the good times at Momilani. They were great. But I'm so thankful for what God did. I came in 2000. I moved from Arizona, moved here back to Hawaii, got called back from ministry out of what I was doing in Arizona, and they came back here in 2000. And I experienced God's faithfulness of 14 years of him doing some great things in all of our lives. I'm so thankful for that, and I remember that. But I'm also thinking, Lord, you did great things here. Imagine what you're going to do the next 20 years if we're faithful to serving you. Can I hear amen? 
remember who God is. In the midst of your storm, remember who God is. Some of the greatest minds and scientists of our day have written about how awesome God is and who he is in the universe. Some of the great Nobel laureates and pioneers in science, let me just rattle off a few of them. Johannes Kepler in the 17th century, one of the history's greatest astron- astronomers, said this, my Lord and my creator, I would like to proclaim the magnificence of your works to men to the extent of my limited intelligence. And to the extent of my limited intelligence, one of the great scientists says, my God, my creator, I want to proclaim the magnificence of your works. Sir Isaac Newton in the 18th century, founder of classical theoretical physics, he writes this, the admirable arrangement and harmony of the universe could only have come from a plan of an omniscient and omnipotent being. Can you imagine that? These greatest minds in all of the earth, great scientists, recognized who God was. Albert Einstein, name that we recognize, in the 20th century, founder of modern physics and the 1921 Nobel Peace Prize winner, says this, everyone who is seriously committed to the cultivation of science becomes convinced that in all the laws of the universe is manifest a spirit vastly superior to man and to which we with our powers must feel humble. Last one, Charles Townes, in the 20th century physicist, he won the Nobel Peace Prize in 1964 for discovering the principles of the laser. He writes this, as a religious man, I feel the presence and intervention of a creator beyond myself but who is always nearby. Intelligence had something to do with the creation of the laws of the universe. We must constantly remind ourselves of who God is and dictate our lives based on his existence, not ours. His existence, not ours. And I think sometimes we need to recalibrate ourselves. That's why we've been saying this. We want to cross over together. No person left behind as we cross over into the destiny where God has us. It's not just a place and it's not Pearl City, it's actually I am. <laughs> where we're going, I believe, together as a family, we must go together. Well, we must remember the goodness of God and who he is and his awesomeness, but also remembering keeps us in a place of humility, keeps us humble, keeps us humble. Scripture says in Psalm 77, to this I will appeal The years when the Most High stretched out his right hand, I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your miracles of long ago. I will consider all your works and meditate on all your mighty deeds. Your ways, God, are holy. What God is as great as our God? You are the God who performs miracles. You display your power among the people. With your mighty arm, you redeemed your people, the descendants of Jacob and Joseph. We are fooling ourselves if we think we can live this life outside of God. We can't. We have to live in his presence, connect with him, stay humble. I know, but life comes in our ways, and sometimes we hit some hardships. And most times, let's be honest, I'll be honest myself, when pain and trials and things come our way and the storms of life come our way, sometimes we cry out to God for relief. No, he's saying, you know what? Remember who I am. Remember I'm awesome. I'm not here just to give you relief. I'm here to correct some things so that you can build up your faith in me. And the storms that you walk through, be humble. And if I come and and bring healing, bring provision, bring protection in your situation, don't forget me. But most times, let's be honest, we tend to forget God. When we walk through a hard time in our life, we cry out to him, remove the pain, bring that healing, bring that reconciliation. Uh, Lord, uh, help me in my finances, help me in that promotion, help me my kids win, win, the, win the soccer player of the year, you know, all those kind of things. Right? We ask God for that. And God might come through. And most times he does because he loves us. But what happens sometimes in our lives, once he comes and, and, and helps us, we tend to forget him. Just like the people of Israel. When it was good, they, they turned to him, and, and when it was good, I'm sorry, when it was good, they kind of forgot him, and they turned their back on God, and God had to bring correction into their hearts and into their lives, and they would cry out to God, save us, and God would come in his sovereignty and his goodness and his faithfulness and his love. He would help them, uh, provide for them, protect them, they would, they, and then they, they would again forget God, and that cycle was continuing to happen to the people of Israel. God knew in his sovereignty. Yes, these stones are here for remembrance, but I'm gonna, I know that it's gonna be a challenge. 
even in our life, it's a challenge. But I want to encourage you, stay humble. In my life, the staff knows, and especially my, ask my wife. <laughs> it's hard to stay humble. Yeah, I, sometimes I am proud and arrogant. Thank you, staff, for not saying amen. Kalai, watch out. I'm not going to sign that check. <laughs> But it is because, right, we, we tend to do things ourselves. And we got it, God. I let, give me the wheel of the car of my life. I got it, God. But I recognize this. If I don't humble myself on my own accord, God comes and brings his humbling to me. And I've always known that if I don't be humble, and say, God, forgive me for what I said, forgive me for what I thought, for what I did, and Lord, help me to stay humble in your presence and keep you at the center of my life. If I don't, he comes in and humbles me. I trust me, I would rather be humble of my own accord than God humbling me. All of us, can we say amen? amen. Can you hear a stronger amen? amen? First Peter says this, humble yourselves therefore under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Humble yourselves. Stay in a place of humility and as you that he will lift you up. You know, this uh, Pro Side 30 for 30 that we are in, it's been a challenge. How many guys have enjoyed it? How many guys have been doing it daily for the last uh, 11 to 12 days? Okay, all right, we need to get more hands up, okay? No, no guilt, okay, no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, but I want to encourage you, where there is unity, God commands a blessing. And so Twinkle and myself, we have our own personal devotional times and our personal times with the Lord, but we decided, hey, this is 30 for 30, we're gonna do it together. And so we committed to doing that, and I committed to doing that, and um, day one was great. <laughs> day two was good. Day three was good. Day four was good. Day five was a challenge, you know, and it was a struggle because of our times and schedules, and one of the days I had a six o'clock in the, in the morning meeting, and those things come, and I said, well, I don't think she wants to get up at 4.30 to do a devotion. I'll let her sleep in a little bit, and we'll come do it at night. So, right, thinking of my wife, right? Noble thought. So we get home, and I'm tired, and so, honey, I hope she's not listening to this. Okay, all right, delete this from the video. And so I'm tired. I come home from a long day dealing with issues and all that kind of things. And she goes, hey, honey, uh, you know, we committed to doing this pro side 30 for 30. I said, I did. <laughs> How I easily forget. And she says, no, you, you committed to doing this, so we should do this. I went, oh, okay, how about I do two tomorrow instead? And we all think that way. Okay, let's all this moment. She says, no, honey, you promised. I said, ah, oh, okay, all right, let's get it. Come on, let's do it. And, 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 but it's been a struggle. And just because I'm a pastor and she's a pastor, it doesn't mean that it's all hunky-dory. It's not. It's a challenge. But we're in this together. Can, I hear the, can, I, can you say the word together? Yes. Let's do this together. Let's do this together so we can cross over together. But stay in a place of humility. Lest God humble ourselves. Remembering also gives us hope. There is hope. There is hope. The people of Israel had hope that God promised that they would cross over into the promised land. Yes, they would encounter struggles. Yes, they would encounter battles. Yes, they would encounter some difficulties, but God promised they would conquer the land and walk into the destiny that he had marked out for them. Psalms 33, the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him, on those whose hope is in his unfading love, to deliver them from death and to keep them alive in Famine. There is hope. He wants to keep you alive. He wants to see your life flourish if we continue to place our hope in him. The story goes, and if you studied it a little further, there were actually two sets of stones that Joshua had to, to grab and to make sure the men had. The first 12 of the first 12 set of stones, the first set of 12 stones, excuse me, were carried and placed in the Jordan River where the priest stood. And the story goes that as the tide of the Jordan River would ebb, and sometimes there were seasons of drought in the land, and we know the story goes there, will, there would be some drought that the Israelites would face, that as the waters receded and as the waters came down, those 12 stones would stick out and be there, and the people of Israel could see the 12 stones right in the middle of the Jordan where the priest stood. 
And it was a sign and a remembrance to say, don't forget, this is where you crossed. This is where my power was manifested in, in, in a real way so that the waters parted. As you go through life, look at those 12 stones. That's a memorial of my power, of my goodness, of my provision in your life. Many of us sitting here this morning, if not all of us, can remember when God spoke to us, can remember when God healed us, can remember when God provided for us, can remember when God brought some relationships that were once fractured and brought some reconciliation. Don't forget those stories. Don't forget those moments. Because as you remember those moments, even now as you remember, you might be in a season of drought. It might be difficult. That water, that ebb of life might be low right now. But as the ebb of life is low, those memorial stones sticking out of the, the Jordan River, you'll see it and go, yeah, God, thank you. That's, I remember that day. You healed me. I remember the day you saved me. I remember the day you protected me. I remember the day you provided for me. I remember the day you worked in my family. I remember the day you worked in my relationship. I remember the day you worked in my finances. I remember the day you worked in my job. Those stones don't forget. Those memories don't forget. Even when life, the ebb of life is low, don't forget. Look at those moments. Remember those moments. Scripture says, But the Lord is faithful. He will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. He will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. God is not there to harm you. He's not. He's a God that loves you. As you commit to following him, as you commit to serving him, as you commit to moving into the things that he has for you, he will strengthen and protect you. Can I hear amen? Amen. Remembering gives us a story to tell. There is a story to tell. The stories of God's provision and protection in your life is not just for you to hold on, it's for you to share to others. Joshua chapter four, verse 20, we pick up the story. Then Joshua set up Gilgal, the second set of 12 stones that they had taken out of the Jordan. These stones are out of the Jordan. He said to the Israelites, in the future, when your descendants ask your parents, what do these stones mean? Tell them, Israel crossed the Jordan on dry ground, for the Lord your God dried up the Jordan before you, before you until you had crossed over. The Lord your God did, it, did to the Jordan what he had done to the Red Sea when he dried it up before us until we had crossed over. Dried it up. He did this so that all the peoples of the earth might know that the hand of the Lord is powerful and so that you might always fear the Lord your God. There's a story to tell. I do have a story to tell. In the demolition last week, the guys were jamming. It was awesome. It was great. Walls were coming down. It's like the walls of Jericho. We shouted, yeah, timber, watch out, don't get hurt. (laughs) It was fun. It was fun getting some aggression out, getting some anxiety out on the walls. It was awesome. Wish you could have all been there. It would have been great. And so I was kind of assigned, kind of helping out one of the captains of our team, Jack, Higa, and, 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 um, and Steve, uh, one of our ushers were Steve. Oh, Steve is hiding there, yeah. And they were up on the, because we had kind of the big wall, it was all the way to the ceiling, and so they were up on the lift, and they were tearing the wall down, and the guys were taking some stuff away. And, and so me, right, okay, being tantada, I, I got to be the pastor, I got to be strong, right? Yeah. So I see this little section attached to the wall, concrete wall, all right? And, I'm, and I see Jack and Steve, they're doing something else, but they're not, not hitting this wall. So I thought, all right, it's my turn. Yeah, I heard someone go, oh. So I grab the sledgehammer, okay, and I'm getting pumped up. All right, I'm getting my, like, just like the, the Thor, just like Thor, right? I, I, I have nothing to say about that. Thank you, media guys. They set me up. Set me up. Make sure that does not go. Don't Instagram that in the name of Jesus. And so I grab the sledgehammer. I grab the sledgehammer, and I, I'm, I'm getting pumped up. I'm, I'm getting ready. And I wind up, and I give it my best shot. I almost dropped the hammer. I almost knocked myself out. I almost did. I hit a piece of steel. <laughs> and my arm there, bam! Whoa! 
And Jack and Steve were laughing at me. They didn't come to say, oh, how are you, pastor? No. No, there was no, there was no, none of the, uh, and, and I hit it hard, and it hurt. So if you see, if you, when you go to the building when it's completed and you see a big dent in the steel, that's me, okay? Paris was here. All right. Now, the first emotion that I had was, and they were all laughing at me, looking at me, and, and so the first emotion I had was I was kind of shame. Right? Yeah, thank you. Oh. <laughs> yeah, Paul Pasta. Okay, all right. They take a time out, Pasta. We got it. All right. And, and I was like, oh, I hope nobody saw. That's the first thing, right? I hope nobody saw. I was like, ah, oh, so shame, Pasta. All right. And it's funny, Jack and Steve, they felt bad, so they said, here, here's some drywall over here. We're going to cut it up for you. You can, you can knock that out, all right? <laughs> they felt bad for me. But I gave it my best shot, you know? In life, there is hope. We give it our best shot. We do our best. God does the rest. God is working on our behalf. In life, sometimes we, 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 we tend to look at life and it, it just overwhelms us. No, don't let life overwhelm you because God has greater things in store for us. People of Israel, the parents were commanded by Joshua to make sure that they tell their sons and daughters the goodness by looking at the stones at Gilgal, the base of operations as they were crossing over. They said, remember these 12 stones right here. Tell your children of the goodness of God and God's, God's provision for us by holding back the waters and parting the waters of the Jordan. And trust me, those children were probably commanded to tell, the, to tell their children. And it passed on from generation to generation. As we hit 20 years, I'm so grateful for the great things that God did in our lives back then, back at Mobilani. But I'm more grateful as I share the stories of God's provision and his goodness and his grace in our, our lives. I'm so thankful for what he'll do in the next 20 years. Can I hear amen? But sometimes we're like this in life. We tend to look at the provision and how God worked in our lives. And I'm channeling Collide George. Because he, Collide George is the king of props on our, on our pastoral speaking team. So I channeled him in as I prepared for this. This is what? It's not a trick question. <laughs> this is a kiddie pool, right? Okay, I bought this $9 at Walmart. All right, all right. So many times in life, we tend to sit in this little kiddie pool of life. It's comfortable. It's comfortable right here. It's way back then, you know, way back in Momilani, when we were about 900 to 1,000 people. I knew everybody in the church. Now that we're probably close to 4,000, I don't know, half the people in the church. And God, you, you, you worked such great things in Momilani way back then. And we tend to kind of sit, oh, God, this is our life posture. God, it's so comfortable in life. I wish you would do the things back then, and then we, I wish you, you would, you, we could go back then. And it was so good. You know, church was smaller. You know, I had better parking. <laughs> you know, I had better seats. Sorry, ushers. And we tend to just kind of go through life like this, and we stay in the memory lane of back then. No. The people of Israel set up the memorial stones. They laid it out as Joshua commanded them to. But they didn't stay at those stones. They didn't stay stoned at those stones. They looked at the stones. They remembered that God's faithfulness, God's vision. But they said, you know what? God has greater things for us. There are greater promises he has for us. And most times we are comfortable right here. This is, this is, this is our zone. But God is saying, you know what? There's greater things ahead of us. There's greater waters ahead of us. There's deeper waters ahead of us. And as we go into deeper waters and greater things, God says, you know what? There's even greater things ahead of us. But the Bible says this. It's not waters up to our ankles. It's not even waters up to our knees. But as you follow me into the greater things I have for you, remember me but I have waters for you to swim in. Waters to overflow in your life. Waters to do some great things in your life. There's greater things in life. Remember the good things of my provision, but trust me, as you continue to walk into the greater things I have for you, I will still move 
on your behalf. Sometimes in life, we get stuck back then. We get stuck in the 70s, we get stuck in the 80s, and 90s, the 2000s, we, they get stuck last year. <laughs> God's saying, hey, you know what? Get out of the kiddie pool of your life. Get out of the kiddie pool of following me, me back then. Remember it, embrace it, but move on. And then as you move on, tell the people around you, share the story to your children. Share the story to the people around you, in your communities, in your, in your jobs. God did this for me, he can do it for you. God did this in my life, he can do it for you. That's what the people of Israel were commanded to do, share their story from generation to generation to generation. We as Pearl Side, we need to do the same thing. Share it from one person to another person. That person sees God moving in their life, they'll share that story and tell somebody else. And it just trickles and moves and moves and pretty soon all of us are crossing over together. Can we stand this morning? As we worship God this morning, maybe in the trials and the hardships of life, we forget the work of God. Or maybe you're here and we t we're, you're camping in the past. You're looking at back and saying, man, I wish we could go back there. No, God is saying, no, I have greater things ahead. Move forward. Are we keeping the stories of God's love and his goodness just to ourselves? Or are we sharing it? Are we displaying it for people around us to see? Are we leveraging the moments that God presents itself in our daily life? God is presenting moments in our life every day. We recognize it, embrace it, and share it to others around us. God is awesome, amen. Lord, we thank you for your goodness and your grace. And Lord, this morning we declare you are an awesome God. You are at work in our lives and you will continue to work in our lives. As we move forward into the great things that you have for us, we thank you.